Hello everyone. It's uh, January 19th, 2022. And after dodging this virus for about two years, it finally got me. Um, here's my test results. I tested once before back in September when I got exposed at work and that was negative. And yesterday I got tested and I'm positive. Um, what happened was I'm pretty sure that my daughter brought it home from uh, school last week. She had a very mild headache and a little congestion. We thought it was just allergies or something. Didn't think much of it. And then um, on Saturday, my wife started to get pretty sick and she had really bad sore throat, headache, um, fatigue, um, cough. And then just yesterday, I started having symptoms of uh, mild cough and some headache. Um, and it got progressively worse throughout the day and I, I got tested um, and it was positive. Last night was pretty rough, um, had a fairly bad headache and uh, mainly it's the headache and the fatigue. My sore throat wasn't too bad. Um, I'm having muscle aches, um, no difficulty breathing, so that's good. Um, and no change in uh, taste or smell. But uh, I thought that I would tell you guys what I'm doing. And it, essentially, it's nothing. Because I think um, w COVID is kind of like one of these things that like you're either ready for it before it hits you or you're, or you're less ready for it when it hits you. Uh, and how well you do with it is kind of a combination of your overall health and your genetics and the way your immune system works. But there are things you can do to optimize it. And I kind of think of it as um, running a marathon. So I've tried to run two marathons in the past. I did not train at all or adequately. And the marathons did not go well. They went okay for the first like 22 miles. And then at mile 22, just too much fatigue. And I had to walk and it basically did not get a, a very good time on these marathons. So I think a marathon is... By the time that the marathon day occurs, you, you've either put in the training, you've put in the time, um, and you're going to do better. You have, now, just because you put in the time and put in the training doesn't mean you're going to have a great race, but it does mean that you have a better chance of having a good race. And there's only so much you can do on the day of the marathon if you haven't trained. It just, you know, there, you, you can sure you can have more willpower and you can gut it out more, but you just, if you haven't put in the training and you're just not ready for it, you're just not going to do as well. And so, you know, looking back at the content that I put out, um, at thinking about what are the things that are important, you know, there's this one where we talked about sugar, which was pretty recently. And luckily, I don't have much of a sweet tooth. So, um, you know, avoiding sugar is relatively easy for me. And I know it's harder for other people. It's uh, some people really love sweets and um, it's, it's, a, it's more of a struggle for them. And uh, but we know that sugar reduces the immune system by quite a bit. And so definitely one, once I started having symptoms, I completely avoided any sugar. And I don't really try to eat sugar anyway to begin with. And then exercise, you know, we know we from this video that we put out a month or so ago, exercise is really good for um, COVID. And um, one of the things I try to do is ride my bike to work every day. And I try to run about 10, 20 miles a week and go to the gym about twice a week. So try to stay relatively active. Um, and so, you know, I definitely, there are people that are more active and that's probably better. We all probably, I mean, unless you're an Olympic athlete or, or a professional athlete, you probably, we probably all could do with more exercise. Um, and then uh, we made this video uh, fairly recently about um, the conditions that uh, if you have them, you're more likely to have problems. And luckily, um, I, I don't have any of these problems, so I wasn't um, as worried about the outcome of uh, COVID. And especially, I assume that what I have right now is Omicron. So a lot of people do things like take vitamins, like vitamin D, zinc, and acetylcysteine, quercetin, and you know we've made videos about all of those things. Um, and what these videos, what if you go back to this video about what can you do to prevent COVID-19, basically most of the studies on supplementation show that taking supplements don't really help. Um, they, they are good if they're part of your diet. 
And so if you get vitamin D, you know, the best way to get vitamin D is to get out into the sun and get some sunlight. And, um, you know, we should try to get out there at least an hour a day. You know, humans were an outdoor species. We're supposed to be outdoors most of the time. But over the past century or so, we've become an indoor species where the vast majority of our time is in our house, in our office, or in our car, and we're almost never outside. So we just don't get the vitamin D that we need. And so most people are chronically vitamin D deficient. And when I started having symptoms, I did take some vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc, because I figured those are, you know, they may not help, but can't really hurt. And so I did definitely did, did that, but I haven't been taking these prophylactically every day throughout the, you know, throughout the pandemic. Um, I think now that COVID is endemic and, um, you know, most viral diseases, there's a lot of other viral diseases other than uh, COVID. COVID is kind of a wake up call for us to just be as healthy as we can be. And you, we have to do something sustainable. And I, I think like late taking supplements forever number one, probably isn't helpful. Number two is probably not sustainable. Um, whereas eating a healthy diet and living a healthy lifestyle is something we should be doing anyway, uh, not just for COVID, but probably for the future pandemics that are gonna occur. Um, pandemics and infectious diseases are gonna become more common as there's increased urbanization and international travel. Um, so I, I don't think that COVID is gonna be the last pandemic. Uh, I don't know when the next one's gonna hit, you know, Maybe it'll be 100 years from now. Maybe it'll be 20 years from now. Who knows? But uh, if you're as healthy as you can be, then um, you're going to have the best shot at uh, doing well in future pandemics. And the good news for me and for those of you who have had COVID is that if you're vaccinated and you get COVID, which is the case for me, I'm vaccinated and then I got COVID, then you probably have very good immunity for future variants. Um, so especially now that if you get Omicron, which is significantly different than the wild type, then, you know, my immune system has had a look at the wild type, uh, protein through the vaccine. And now it's had a look at likely Omicron. So it has seen many different forms of the spike protein and a nucleocapsid. Um, and so likely I have, we'll, we'll have pretty good immunity for uh, future variants, if there are future variants, which I'm hoping they're not, but there very well could be. Um, anyways, I think over the course of today, I'm feeling much better. So luckily for me, this seemed like it was a pretty mild infection. And um, uh, my total symptomology has been about a day. Uh, hopefully I don't feel worse tomorrow when I uh, wake up. We'll see how that goes. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, but the good news is hopefully um, I'll have very good immunity for future pandemics. There is a um, uh, weekly uh, mortality and morbidity report from CDC that talks about natural immunity. Um, and uh, now that I have kind of both vaccine and natural immunity, um, we'll go over that paper sometime in the next few days when I feel kind of more up to it. And um, yeah, I hope you guys stay safe and healthy. And I think this is a wake up call for all of us to try to be as healthy as possible before these things happen. Because, you know, by the time that uh, a viral infection gets you, there's only so much you can do. You're, you're, you're either optimized for it or you're not. You're either healthy and you've done what you can to be as healthy as possible or you haven't. And after the uh, virus attacks you, there's a, only a limited number of things you can do. Um, I guess if I was a, in the high risk group, I was very elderly or had one of these things, I probably would have talked to my primary care doctor and see if I could have gotten um, one of the monoclonal antibodies that work for Omicron, like Citrovimab. Or, you know, if it was very early, you know, I could try remdesivir or Paxlovid, the, um, the, uh, the Pfizer, um, uh, the, uh, I think that's the protease inhibitor from Pfizer. So I would have tried to get one of those if I was a high risk person, but um, knowing uh, my health status and other things, I figured that things would go relatively well and so far seems to be the case. So luckily, um, hopefully I'm on the mend and I'm gonna probably go to bed pretty soon here and rest up. And uh, when we, when we, maybe tomorrow or the next day, I'll go over that paper from uh, the CDC. All right, thanks for watching.